Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll be looking at how powerful is Little Miss Fortune. I bet she's more powerful than you think she is. Quick warning, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen the game and you don't want to be spoiled, please go play the game, watch a playthrough, whatever, and then come back to the video. Let's start off with Little Miss Fortune's background. At the very start of the game, we, the player, are told by the narrator that Little Miss Fortune is just an average girl. But the issue is, is she's going to die. This is Miss Fortune. She's a wonderful child from a not so wonderful family. Am I not sparkle for you? And a little sparkle for you? A little bit for me. <laughs> oh, the sad part is today is the day she will die. Hmm. I can hear you, your mom. After this, we then go on a little adventure following the story and background the narrator has laid out to go find eternal happiness for Little Miss Fortune's mother. You know, I have prepared a game. There are some twists and turns in this adventure, including crossing a road, binding a dead body, and, you know, classical horror-based things. In the end of the game, we discover the narrator is actually a demon that had already killed my Little Misfortune, and the entire point of this game was just to keep her under control the whole time. So now we're playing hide and seek. I love that game. Mm, leave me alone. All right, just so you know, my game in the end, Little Miss Fortune's able to be free, and that's how the game ends, with the true ending giving her mother eternal happiness. On a much more light-hearted note, this is some music that's in the Little Misfortune game, and I'll be using this music for the rest of the video. Let's go into talking about how Little Misfortune is actually connected to another horror game called Frambo. You can clearly see how they're connected with demons that's like attacking younger children, and the reason why we know they are connected is, well, they're made by the same person, and 
they have the same cosmology. This cosmology is explained in the five essential realms of existence, which I'll go over later in this video, as well as the ultra reality. This is seen throughout the entirety of Frambo, as well as seen throughout the novel of Benjamin the Fox in Little Misfortune. So now let's talk about the five realms of essential existence, also known as three. The first realm is the realm of light, called the Privato. In this realm, which is the first realm, beings exist as just being of light and surprisingly move at the speed of light. The next realm is the realm of light. This is called Iscursa. And in this one, you see multiple trees, insects, and mostly wildlife. The third realm is the realm of humanity. This is where we would expect most people to be. Earth, Mars, Solar System, that type of thing. The fourth realm is of Sendurga. I can't pronounce that one. But it is the realm of death. And after that, we get to the realm of what is essentially evil. And this is the realm of Remor, the antagonist of Frambo. And this is the fifth realm of the five realms of essential. We also know that the Ultra Reality exists. The ultra Reality is a realm shown in Frambo to be extremely important and extremely powerful, and it also exists in the world of Little Misfortune. Now, outside of everything mentioned in Frambo, we have some new realm that's mentioned in the game of Little Misfortune. This realm is the beyond and it's where the demon Wargo is from, the antagonist of Little Misfortune. The beyond is arguably beyond that of even the ultra reality, which we'll go on in a bit more detail in a minute. Wargo scales to the beyond and so does Little Misfortune, so that will be all important for the rest of this video. So, starting off the scaling with something a bit more on the low end, we know that each of the five realms of essential existence have infinitely layered time spaces. We know this because it was stated by Cogs the Clockmaker twice in this curse We also know that from the Mother of All Darkness, that the five realms of essential existence are all parallel with time, so if there's infinite re reality in one of the realms, it should be in all the realms. For the higher end scaling, we look more towards some conceptual stuff implied by the world of Frambo. For starters, the Mother of All Darkness, Mabuka, is stated to be the feeling of all sinister and darkness you can possibly imagine, and is also implied to be the end of light itself. This isn't directly conceptual, but does in fact imply it to be a conceptual entity. This would mean that at the very least, the realm it's from is at least outerversal. Similarly, her son, the Prince of Darkness, Remor, is stated to have Rambo be the manifestation of her desires. Manifestations are parts of a concept that come down to the world, and therefore would imply that Remor himself is conceptual, which feeds conceptual beyond a high hyperstructure would make him outerversal. Then we even have the regular Kamalas, which are just basically normal residents of that realm, having a very similar statement for them being the very existence of all their fears, uncontrolled illnesses, the whole lot. So it, you could say this entire realm is full of conceptual entities. And not to mention, all the realms of the conceptual existence should be on a similar level to one another. So all the realms of existential existence should all be outerversal structures. If Another realm that would easily be outerversal is the ultra reality. The ultra reality is a realm beyond five realms of essential existence, already implying outerversal scaling. It's also said that a character like Frambo, who can travel between the realms, needs to break all their limitations, all the physical ones, and that in comparison to the other realms, the ultra reality is more like a mental state. So this could be even higher scaling into outerversal. Now it's very easy to lose track of cosmology with such big realms as we're talking about here. So how about a quick summary? 
when we're looking at the five realms of essential existence, we get three different bounds. The first one, the lower bound being five high hyper realms. This is using the infinitely layered time space as mentioned earlier. We have the five baseline outerversal realms. This is where we say that like Mother Veluca represents all the darkness as a conceptual entity and therefore is baseline outer, and each realm should scale to relative one another, making it five baseline outerversal realms. And then we have the highest scaling, where we use something like the Kamala, just normal residents of a realm, being outerversal. This would make each of the five realms contain billions of baseline outerversal beings. The reason why it's billions for people who want to know, the Kamala are individual to each human on Earth, and there are 7 billion humans on Earth, so billions is probably like an underestimate, because if they don't die over time, so it'd be more like hundreds of billions. But in any case, we then talk about the Ultra Reality, which I only found two different bounds for, the lower bound being baseline outerversal because of its blatant outerversal scaling, and the higher bound being two layers of outerversal scaling. This is if you say it's like an outerversal layer beyond something that's already outerversal, but it's not anything too great, it's like high outerversal, just two layers into out. In terms of which one I think is most correct, I think that each realm has to be more than just high hyperstructures. This would mean that the ultra reality has to be two outerversal layers, as it is beyond anything of the five realms of essential existence. Now, the beyond is beyond the five realms of essential existence and most likely the ultra reality. It states that beyond, in terms of like physical space, is extremely absurd with its logical laws, which is impressive considering this is coming from Benjamin the Fox, a being who has been to the five realms of essential existence and has a weapon from the ultra reality. Speaking of the weapon of the ultra reality, he's given this to help protect Little Miss Fortune, yet he keeps talking about in his novel that he's actually afraid to take on war, despite the fact that he has a weapon from the ultra reality itself, easily putting Morgo way higher than that. You can actually argue that because of the physical laws being illogical in comparison to the five realms of essential existence, and that it's actually quite dangerous for such entities to enter the five realms of essential existence, it is most likely that the beyond is an entire conceptual level higher than the five realms of essential existence. However, it is also likely that instead of being a whole conceptual layer that would make it high outer, it's more likely just a normal outerversal transcendent. So, do another quick summary, but this time for the beyond, using the conclusions we made for the five realms of essential existence and the ultra reality. We can say the beyond is either an outerversal layer above the five realms of essential existence, or we can say it's an outerversal layer above the ultra reality. Now, unlike the previous one, where I was quite confident in my decision to pick all decisions I did make for the five realms of essential existence and the ultra reality, the beyond is not so clear cut. We, there are some implications the ultra reality is a rival to the beyond, or it itself is relative or above the beyond. So it's very debatable which way around this is. So either interpretation. Now it's stated that when Morgo was kidnapping children, he would transform the world reality into what the child most desires. Now this backfired on Little Misfortune because Little Misfortune, being some, from such a harsh background, has such a strong desire that she was changing reality against what Morgo was wanting. Several times in the story when Little Misfortune should have died, Instead, Little Misfortune survived, and there was no reason. The narrator was clearly surprised by this several times.
Furthermore, as stated earlier on in the video, Benjamin the Fox, despite having a weapon from the Ultra Reality, is actually scared to face more though in one-on-one, -on -one, and is mostly just hiding in the background because of such. However, the more he sees Little Misfortune, the more confidence he gets. He notes this down in his novel as well. And with that being said, it really comes into mind that Little Misfortune throughout the game constantly wants to see Benjamin and doesn't really like Wargo at all, even though they constantly talk to each other. So it's very, very logical to say that the reason why Benjamin can suddenly gain this confidence and use a weapon from a lesser realm to defeat Morgo from the beyond is because it's Little Mrs. Fortune's desire of such, this thing that was granted to her. Just to put this into context, remember Benjamin is scared of Morgo and he has a weapon from a lesser reality, yet when he does battle Morgo, it happens just like this. Because it was so simple, it is very clear to say that something has happened to Benjamin that even he doesn't know about for why this has happened, and that's why I'm saying that Little Misfortune's desire to see Benjamin over Morgo is why he's able to one-shot Morgo. In terms of like how potent this desirability is, we know that it can for one control the fate of the game, as we know that when Little Misfortune goes around making things happy throughout the game. She can get eternal happiness for her mother. This was shown earlier on in the video. However, the eternal happiness was a promise made by Morgo at the start of the game and doesn't exist. So Mila's Fortune made something that didn't exist exist by desiring it subconsciously. We also know from this desirability, as she stated to Morgo, she wanted to spend the rest of her life with Benjamin. And at the end of the game, that's exactly what she does. She goes into the afterlife with Benjamin, perfectly happy. Now, another way of talking about the potency of this ability of Little Misfortunes is instead of looking at how powerful it is, but instead to look at the type of effect it has, like its fundamentality. So we look at what he was able to overcome and how fundamental that was. We know that Morgo is a beyond outerversal being easily, easily beyond two outerversal layers. So this is easy on a conceptual level in terms of how it's fundamental. We also know that Morgo is controlling the reality that they are in. It's literally stated such. So we know that this is a form of subjective reality where they make reality as it is. We also know that Morgo is the narrator of this reality, working as someone in the background. This would imply that there's a sort of narrative manipulation as well. With all this being said, we'd say that the ability that Lumis Fortune has to change, you could say fate, get your wishes granted, whatever you'd like to call it, that ability, in terms of how fundamentally it works, it works better than a conceptual, narrative, subjective reality. It works better than that. Her ability is above that. So, Little Misfortune has two very, very obvious and clear weaknesses. The first weakness is being a young girl with very high spirit, despite her very dark nature around her, she's very naive to the world around her. She doesn't recognise when someone's trying to harm her, so it's very hard to argue that she would defend herself in these such situations. She might desire that she doesn't die, but it doesn't mean she will win the encounter. We also can say that Little Misfortune's ability does not increase her physical stats whatsoever. She is still just a little girl, she just has this ability granted to her and it works higher than outerversal beings. Now for the summary, we have a bit of a different summary than we have for the past two Little Nightmare videos. You see, because as we said, she just has the physical statistics of an average little girl. Her ability is quite phenomenal. It works on beings who are two to three outerversal layers of existence, more fundamentally than conceptual narrative subjective reality, and changes fate or grants her wish for a certain outcome to happen. It's really diverse, really potent. However, she has the weakness of being so young and naive that she can't recognise danger and lacks actual physical strength. 
quick side note before I end the video. On both character stats and profile and versus battle wiki, I found it very impressive how did their brand both profiles. So I'm hoping that they'll have a very good little misfortune profile when they do that. Thank you all for watching. Ooh, it's been a while since we've had to do a character that powerful. The last character we did this strong was an SCP. Speaking of which, we actually have a new poll coming out asking what topics you want me to do. One of the options is SCP. We also have anime some explain videos on extraversal or intelligence just look at the poll and you can decide what you want as always check out my friends Corin O'Keefe and Captain Forrest I got even more friends in the description but I only can show two in the end credit card so those two will be here and with that thank you all for watching